Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Tuesday, November the 8th, so welcome to a new day. Um, I'm having my cup of tea this morning. I've got my Taiwanese green tea. It's perfect. I love green tea. And I'm um, just settling in for the day. It's going to be a long one. And uh, so I want to make sure that, uh, you know, we start off with a positive attitude. First of all, I do want to thank everybody who commented yesterday about the uh, chocolate question. It turns out that there are a lot of women in our community who love salted caramel chocolate, which is my personal favorite too. And you know, uh, sea salt with dark chocolate, the comments just kept coming. And I really, um, you know, obviously it's, they're hard to find these sea salt chocolates. So if you have a favorite, let me know, I'd like to try it. But it was lovely just to see everybody jumping in and you know, just com communicating with each other, leaving messages and sharing something of your yourself in, in the comments. It's really important. That's uh, what we are here for. It's what the 60 and Me community is all about. So thank you. Thanks for being here. Now, as I said, today is uh, Tuesday, November the 8th, big day in the United States. It's election day. And uh, before we get started with the news, I just want to say something about, um, about what's going to unfold in the next, you know, 24 hours. You know, we have stayed very neutral here at 60 and Me uh, on the election and the candidates, and that's how we intend to, to, to continue. But I do know, the one thing I do know is that at the end of today, when the results are announced, we are still going to have a divided country. We have got so many people who have opposing and um, you know different points of view, and those conversations are going to have to continue, whichever of the candidates win. So I think we have to look at our situation personally. You know what we believe in. We've got to stand up for our our values and our beliefs, and most importantly, go vote. Don't succumb to the aging stereotype that women over 60 are invisible. We are not. We have a voice. We have an opinion, and in many ways, we have a lot to offer. You know, many of us have seen uh, uh, elections that have been difficult, have been confrontational, and we've managed to move through it and, you know, and, build, and hopefully build uh, consensus again, or at least build understanding. And I think that's all we can do in just about anything in life is what we can control. So we can control voting, we can vote. We can control our emotions and our compassion and understanding towards those who differ in their views. So I think that's really important is to show compassion and kindness to everyone. And I know that there's a lot of um, initiatives around this. So I, you know, I just want you to go out there today, try to be positive and strong and um, you know, and just get through it. Now, I, I, for me personally, I've got some techniques I'm going to use. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna write today. I'm gonna try to write down some of the things I'm grateful for in this world, uh, regardless of parties, just the people that I care about. I'm going to stay close to Facebook today and um, look for people that are having difficulties in our community with this and just give you a you know, give you a hug and give you uh, some um, energy to continue. No, it's hard for some people. And also I'm going to meditate. You know, the practice of meditation for me, and I've been meditating now for, gosh, almost 40 years, is, um, is for me to learn how to soften myself. You know, how to be more um, accepting and understanding of who I am. And to focus on the things that are positive in life and you know, just stay with those. And so for me, my practice uh, allows me to see the, the kindness and the, and the genuineness, the, 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 you know, the, the, the compassion for other people. So I just hope that that helps. I, I know you all, all are gonna have ways to get through the day today, but um, let's be in this together. Let's be positive for one another. Now, in terms of the world around the world, <laughs> the news around the world, a few things happening. Um, in Delhi, in India, this is an interesting story. I mean, I know the pollution in India is bad because of all this, the open fires that people light. But today, oh, in fact, yesterday and today, the schools are all closed in Delhi because of the very, very bad pollution. And I think it's a wake-up call. You know, this is not just a, a, a slight problem. This is a big problem in many, many countries around the world. And related to that is the COP22 um, a meeting, which is taking place now for the next few days in, Mor in Morocco, in Marrakesh. And this is where they're talking now about how to put an action plan together to, to, to put into place the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, which a lot of, which every, just about every country in the world has signed up for. And this is now uh, in place. It's gone into effect. But what it means is that countries now all around the world, from developing 
to not developed are having to do what they can to reduce um, CO2 emissions and help with pollution that's affecting the whole world. So how to turn that dream of, of a sustainable world into reality. It's in Morocco right now. In Syria and Iraq, uh, the, 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 both battles begin now for Mosul and, and Raqqa. Uh, Mosul, as you know, is in Iraq and the government, U.S. Um, uh, co well, the coalition of um, Iraq um, government and other um, uh, partners are, are still working on their approach to Mosul. It's turned out to be a lot more difficult than they thought. The ISIS were, uh, fighters are fighting back very strong and they're also hurting a lot of civilians. And so they're moving literally house to house. That's in Mosul. And then in Raqqa, the, uh, there's a coalition, a US-backed coalition of Kurdish fighters who are on their way to Raqqa, which is in Syria. And that's another um, uh, city that has been overtaken by the ISIS um, jihadists. And now this sort of joint effort, actually they're not coordinated specifically, but they are, of course, working to the same goal, which is to, to rid this planet of ISIS uh, rebels. Um, in Beijing and Hong Kong, another conflict is taking place, and it's really, again, this conversation between democracy and um, more uh, conservative um, governments. China owns Hong Kong, and they want all their politicians to really speak the company line, to be, um, you know, to be supporting their cause. And they are getting a bit of a opposition from some of the younger voters in Hong Kong who want to be independent. So two people were elected into power, but they, they changed the words around when they were doing their, um, their oath of allegiance to China, and so China has banned them. They said they didn't really put the commitment and the truth into their, uh, their, their uh, oath, and now they're, they're not going to be able to take office. So that's going on in Beijing, very, very strange, or actually it's happening in Hong Kong uh, and, and Beijing. In France, interesting story, yesterday at 4.34 p.m., women in France walked out of their jobs in protest of unequal pay. They, they have you know, done the homework and it turns out that the women are, the gender pay gap is very strong and they are not earning enough. And what that date yesterday represented was that's the exact moment on, in 2016 when French women start to work for free. In a sense, they, 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 they've earned so little relative to men uh, in the same jobs over the year that they basically now, for the next uh, you know, weeks of the year, are working for nothing. So that was the point they were making. And um, one day, one day, we, we can only hope this is going to change. So that's, uh, that's in France love our French sisters, they're, they're doing great. Now, the other thing I completely forgot yesterday, and my apologies, is that yesterday was Joni Mitchell's birthday. Joni Mitchell, of course, we all know Joni Mitchell, fabulous poet, poetess, artist, musician. She was 73 yesterday, and she's kept a fairly low profile the last few years. Uh, she had a brain aneurysm in 2015, and not much has been seen of her, but she came out in August uh, to a concert, a Chick Corea concert, and uh, was, you know, says she's doing okay. But her birthday was yesterday. So just as we take a moment to just give a shout out and a thanks to Joni Mitchell, one of my total favorites in the, in the world, uh, what was your favorite song? Do you remember those songs? I think I, I liked A Case of You and I liked River. Um, oh, I don't know, there were so many, California. Uh, and I, I just, I think of all these songs and I, and I listen to them as poems rather than as songs because she was so profound. Anyway, she wrote all, a lot of these songs before she was even in her 30s. And did you know that she plays the open guitar uh, the way that she does, you know, she strums it? Because she had polio when she was a little girl and uh, that's affected her hands. Again, how people fight back, fight back from uh, disadvantage and, and sickness. Amazing things. Uh, I wanted to feature a couple of feel-good stories. This one's kind of fun, and I, and I don't have all the details, but this man, his name was um, the, the, um, Kenton Lee. Kenton Lee was working with kids in Kenya, and he decided that um, they, they were missing something really important, and that was shoes. They just didn't have shoes, and they were walking barefoot around, you know, fairly dirty uh, ground, and, and sometimes it was, you know, infected with different uh, disease and so on. So he decided he was going to make shoes for kids. But what he did differently was he made shoes that grow. And I, I wish I could show you a picture of these because they were so cool. Basically, what he did is like a, it's a shoe with straps and little, um, like, um, holes, and the child would wear the shoes when they were, you know, 
five years old, and then they could extend it. And so the shoe stretched in back and sideways so that they could wear the same pair of shoes for 10 years, you know, like through five different sizes. I just think that's really cool. And it kind of goes back to my point at the beginning about we do what we can. You know, you, you're confronted with a big problem, a big um, division of, of uh, you know, uh, points of view, and you just, you just do it. You go and make shoes, make shoes for kids. That's what he did, Kenton Lee. It's a really good story. And uh, I just, I, so I just want to take a pause here. I hope this is all useful today. I don't know about you, but I'm just feeling kind of anxious. I think I need a, I think I need a stronger drink than my cup of tea this morning. But it just feels like something's going on out there and it's, it's all around communication. So I decided to choose a story to share with you today um, from one of our bloggers. Her name's Mary Armstrong. And Mary wrote an article for us about the art of, of talking, of, of the art of discussion. And she wrote this article and got all this feedback that um, we didn't expect, which was, you know, I don't care about communication. No one ever listens to me. And it was this whole dialogue that older women sometimes feel that we're not being respected, that we're not being listened to, and that a lot of us feel we're the listeners, but never the talkers. So she wrote another article to follow up on that, and talking about how if you want to be heard, if you have something you want to say, and you want to get feedback from someone, you might just have to ask for it. Now, a lot of people do take advantage of a good listener. You know, they, they think, oh, this is someone I can just tell my whole life story to and they'll solve all my problems and, you know, I can just chat away. But it really, it's an art of listening and an art of talking. And I know this is a bit of a stretch, but I, I really do think it's at the heart of some of the challenges we've had in the United States election this year, is if just people could have sat down and talked with each other more, I think there would have been a different um, tone. But anyway, so Mary wrote this article and her, her key theme was here, how do we get someone to listen to us? And so some of the points were, first of all, if you are talking to someone, they've had their chat, they've told you, what, you know, what's been happening with them. And then you can say something very simply like, you know, that's, re that's really exciting. And isn't it great to have someone listen to your, to your story? It helps. You know, I have something I'd like to share with you. Would you mind if I, if I told you, you know, something that's on, on my mind? And then what are they going to say? No. Now, most people say, yes, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then you talk then you share. And that's, the, that's from the listening, from the, from the person who's talking perspective. Don't be rude, but speak your mind, you know, and don't, and say, I'm not actually looking for any solutions or advice. I'm just kind of want to share. Because the natural instinct is to want to give advice. And I know this is from our perspective as listeners, one of the things older women, well, older people do. We've done that like 10 times. <laughs> We know what it's all about. I mean, not just because, you know, we're smart or clever, but we've just experienced it. So we immediately jump in with solutions. I do this sometimes, and I actually do it with my kids sometimes. They come, and I still, I still do it. You know, where they come to me with an issue, a problem, I'm immediately on it. I know how to solve that problem. So I think that's, that's one of the things, is if you're, if you're listening, listen with an open mind, no judgment. If you're talking, though, if you're trying to get your point across, be firm and ask for it. Ask for help. Ask for an ear to listen. The next thing that she talks about is listen to your voice. Actually listen to your voice. Tape it and see how you sound. Because she said that a lot of women in a meeting, for example, will say something and, and nobody will even respond. They'll just move on to the next person. And then somebody will say the same thing. And it's all like, great idea that you said it, but you didn't say it in a way that was authoritative or that was well, just the way that people listen. We're humans, this is how it works. So listen to your voice and just ask yourself, is that a voice I would listen to? Is that a voice I would pay attention to? So that's actually quite a good idea. Do you have a tone of authority when you speak? Another point that Mary makes, which I think is really good, is to get a partner. You know, just pair up with a, with a, with a partner, a listening partner, and just play those roles back and forwards. And you'll learn and be open, honest with each other. And I think that's a really cool point. You know, if you're the listener, set aside all your judgment. If you're the, if you're the talker, be firm and assertive and genuine. Just talk. I think that's really important. And um, I, I hope that's helpful because I think, honestly, communication and compassion are at the heart of, you know, the challenges that the world faces. If we can just 
you know, start talking to one another with an open and honest, a good heart, with compassion and caring, we might be able to start building the, the, the bridges that we need so desperately. And it's not just United States, it's everywhere in this world that when we travel, when we are, if you're living in another country, I know a lot in the UK right now are dealing with the Brexit decision. It's tough. So anyway, let's just start talking to each other and please leave comments today and um, watch for people that need a little hug and let's just give it to each other. Now, oh, the winners are our face mask. I have three of these beautiful face masks and I'm going to give them to the following people. Alice Long Kolb, Rosie Rose, and Barbara Hashimoto. I've sent you a note and if you just send me your email or your mailing addresses, I can get them off to you. So congratulations and I hope you enjoy them. And finally, let's close with, let's close with a hug. <laughs> just give each other a hug today, big hug and give yourself a big hug. Um, you know, what can we do as individuals to improve communications and help the world be a better place? That's my question for today. You know, how can we bring positivity to the lives and uh, to the people that we love? But the key thing is, how, what do you think we can do as individuals to improve communications and make the world a better place? Let's start a conversation and I hope you all have a fabulous Tuesday and I look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye-bye for now.